it was always about resources not being available. It wasn't about just money being around, which is the common, you know, comeback by the people that don't know economics. They'll fire back at you. Well, you're just printing more money, causing hyperinflation. There's never been a hyperinflation in a functioning democracy, ever. It's always political instability, some political instability that has rocked their nation that creates these hyperinflation type scenarios. I wouldn't even bring it up, but I see this tie in. You've got agricultural areas that are dependent on producing this stuff. You've got political instability. They've got immature economies. And ultimately, once the colonizer or someone like us who's exporting our neoliberalism everywhere decides to flex its muscles, we can literally destroy their economy just like that. Can you talk a little bit about hyperinflation and its role in creating these immigrant crisis, these refugee crises? Um, you know, I, I think that there's something to be said there. I want to see what your thoughts are. Right. So uh, there's there's a couple of things that that link us back to the hyperinflation issue. First of all, you know, keep in mind that many developing countries, one of the key deficiencies, economic deficiencies that they suffer from is food dependence. They're net importers of food and energy imports are a huge burden on most developing countries with the exception of a few you know big oil exporters and even those because they depend so much on oil exports that fluctuations in, in oil prices you know create a lot of uh, instability for them because their entire economy is based off of just oil exports and even when it comes to oil exports they really don't have energy independence because they export the the crude oil which is the low value added content and they end up importing the refined product to run their cars to run their factories to run their you know airplanes and machines and everything else even the biggest oil producers in the world are still energy importers because they don't have the capacity the productive capacity internally to refine oil products into the petrochemicals that they actually need for their economy. So they end up exporting low value added content, crude oil, and importing high value added content, kerosene and gasoline and, and other petrochemicals. So it, it turns out that all developing countries, including oil exporters, are actually energy dependent uh, when it comes to these things. So how does this translate into inflation? If you run a trade deficit structurally year after year for decades, because you're constantly importing food, you're constantly importing energy, medicine, technology, you're, you're dependent on so many other things. No matter what you're exporting, you're exporting low value added content and you're importing high value added content. So even in manufacturing, you see developing countries uh, exporting cars and trucks and even airplanes. When you start looking at the details, well, they're the assembly line for producing cars because all the parts are imported from other high tech countries. So they import all the high value added content parts, assemble them together with cheap labor and export the finished product. The net effect is, is that they're losing in that, in that game. So you have these three factors, food, energy, and low value export content. They all translate into larger and larger trade deficits. Trade deficits put pressure on the value of their currency. So it devalues their currency. So the next day or the next year when they're trying to import more food or more fuel or more medicine, they would import it at a higher price. So they're importing inflation because of the devalued currency. So instead of doing that, because you know if you import high inflation for food and medicine and transportation, you have food rights, you have energy rights, you have all kinds of rights. So it creates social and political instability. So instead of dealing with the structural issue, the Band-Aid solution is to artificially fix the exchange rate at a higher value, artificially subsidize fossil fuel imports, subsidize food imports, subsidize all basic necessities, and that translates into external debt that those countries have to accumulate over time. That's debt denominated in US dollars and euros and British pounds and Japanese yen, and that's how those countries lose their financial sovereignty. And when they lose the capacity to borrow, because this is a continuous process, and when financial markets say, well, you have too much external debt, we can't lend you anymore, you're going bankrupt. And that's when they lose their capacity to control the exchange rate. And that's when inflation and hyperinflation kicks in. And depending on the political situation, depending on the intensity of the situation, that translates into high levels of inflation or even hyperinflation cases. Venezuela being a case in point, obviously, when there is 
lots of external animosity, let's say from the US or England or whatever, then that makes that country even more isolated and, and more prone to hyperinflation scenarios. You see that in the case of Venezuela very clearly, in the case of Zimbabwe also very clearly, um, because of what Mugabe did to upset the British after they left. Thank you.